Hi, and welcome to Mondays with Marlo. I'm so excited today because we have Kelly Ripa as our guest. Not only is she a great guest, but I get to turn the tables on her. For years, she's been asking me questions. So today, I get to ask her questions, and so do you. And she is the winner. Do you know, Kelly, you're the winner? I'm the winner? What did I win? You won the most questions coming in over the weekend. Of all our celebrities, you've got the most questions. Everybody wants to know how you stay so gorgeous and thin after three kids. No, no. How you deal with your three children and your marriage (laughs) and working and what it's like to work with Regis and so many questions. So well, it's, it's my pleasure to be here and you know I love and admire you and thanks. always have. So Thank you're, you. Thank you're the you. best. So now, what mm-hmm. you're going to do is you're going to answer the questions to the camera. I am. And our first one is from Kate and it says, Kelly, I'm dying to know who will replace Regis and when will it be revealed? Ah, very uh, good question. <laughs> um, we don't know who's going to replace Regis. Um, Regis is not leaving until um, the end of November. So um, we really have no idea. We're not even going to start looking until he leaves the show. So oh, it's really? Be a while. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Probably May, around May, maybe. I mean, I I don't know. I'm just speculating. Yeah. And he we leaves. T- we'll time these things with sweeps. The exit will be during sweeps. <laughs> the entrance will That's be during right. sweeps. That's right. That's yeah. right. And this is from somebody named Thompson. After having kids, if you had to give only one tip as a parent. What would it be? Oh, Thompson, great question. Um, after having kids, I would say pace yourself on the guilt because <laughs> people feel guilty. Like they waste all of their guilt right away the first couple of years. But there's <laughs> so many years that they are with you that you have so much to feel guilty about. So I would go slowly on the guilt. <laughs> That's great. Uh, here, this is from Judith. Kelly, being a mother of three, how do you release these guilt feelings? And what do you do when you know you're working a lot? Or have you got past that? And what advice can you give to parents to help them? You know, I've got to tell you, um, I feel like any other working parent. I feel like when I'm at work, I'm not really focusing on my job because I'm thinking about what I've forgotten to do at home with the children. And I feel like when I'm with my children, I'm thinking about what I've forgotten <laughs> to do at work. So I'm really, a, I'm, I'm sort of not, not of a, sync. I'm, I'm not a very good employee, <laughs> and I'm not a very good parent. No, but um, I just think that you know, you do the best you can. That's all our parents ever did, and people have been having children and raising families for years, and you just do the best you can. This is an interesting question from Sarah Jo. She says, "Is it as fun as it looks every morning with Regis?" Yeah, I mean, our show that you see is what's happening in real time. So what you see is actually what's happening. It is fun. There are days where it's, there are days where it's so much fun. There are days where nothing bad happens, nothing out of the ordinary happens, and it's not as much fun. It's kind of just we're doing the usual thing. But when something breaks and something goes wrong, that's great for us. It's great television fodder, and it makes the audience really connect with us and have something to laugh at, usually us. <laughs> Here's a question from, uh, and this is live, from somebody named Kelly. Okay. Any special summer holiday plans with the family? Yes. Um, every year, you know, Mark and I take our, our, our entire family on vacation vacation. Last year we went to Italy and it was really nice and we had a great time. This year we're going out west. We're going to do an out west trip, either um, the Grand Canyon or one of, one of those gorgeous national parks or perhaps uh, New Mexico. We, we like to do minivan trips with the kids. Really? We, yeah, we do. We go to Cowboy Town to Cowboy oh, Town. Oh, wow. The, the, by the end of the trip, this van smells like feet and everybody's <laughs> miserable. But we've bonded, or at least we think we How have. How old are your children? Um, we have a 13-year-old son. Uh, Lola is nine and Joaquin is eight. Actually, Michael and Lola in June, Michael will turn 14 and Lola will turn 10. Wow. So, yeah, I'm going to have 14, 10, and eight. Wow. Yeah. You look great. Oh, thanks. It's all makeup and this lighting. <laughs> By the way, I've never felt better than being here with this light. That's brilliant. It's really I need great. it. It's incredible. I need it. Um, what are you still working on when it comes to raising your children? That's a really good question. Um, For me, it's an it's an It's a process. I mean, it's a you're constantly evolving. uh, The older your kids get, and it really is true. People said to me, "Little little kids, little problems; big kids, big problems," Mm. and that is very true. For us, the key has been when we punish our kids because of something, and they're really good kids. But if like an assignment hasn't been turned in, or there's back talk, or whatever, um, the key to us has been when you punish something, 
you see through the punishment. You don't back down. Mm -hmm. You know, my kids always think that if they browbeat me to death for the whole weekend, I will change my mind. My daughter, for example, had a sleepover to go to, and she got very, she was very fresh and, and a lot of back talk, and um, I, I punished her from the sleepover. And in essence, I really punished myself because <laughs> instead of instead of having her out of the house for the whole weekend, she was here with me. <laughs> begging me right. and 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 the key is to not give in to that because that's the stuff that really stops bad behavior right it's I true think. no it's true mm -hmm. it's true and we used to do that with my mother too because she would change her mind yeah she would say right. no too fast yeah she'd say no too fast and then we thought well maybe there's a little leak in there and we'd stay after her and after her until she said yes and then yeah. no it was I, a bad we, uh, habit we stay with it that's good that's good um if you weren't an actor or a tv show host what do you think you would have done for your career Oh my gosh, uh, there's so many things that I would have loved to have done. I would have loved to have been a gymnast. And I, I, and I only say this not because I've ever had any gymnastics experience or training, but I've seen the Olympics. <laughs> and I always say, oh, well, I, then you're ready. I'm ready. <laughs> exactly. I think I could do that. I know I could. I'm built like a gymnast, and I think I could do that. Um, and I also think I would have liked to have been a teacher, only yeah. I lack any patience. Well, then you wouldn't be a very good <laughs> <No>. teacher. <laughs> okay, here's from Madison. Do you impose challenges on yourself? Do you make secret bets with yourself? Do you set personal goals and try to meet them? How do you manage to stay sharp and fresh and engaging even as eight, nine, ten years pass? So this is a lot of questions, but I guess what she's really saying is, how do you keep yourself? I'm up? always I'm always challenging myself. I mean, Mark always laughs at the way I exercise. He says it's like you're training for some event that's <laughs> never happening. And it really is true. I'm constantly training. I like to set little personal goals. If I'm lifting weights, I try to lift a little bit heavier. I try to do a few more reps. If I'm dancing, I try to get my extensions a little bit longer. Oh, that's a great. Bit. Yeah, I always just, just personal challenges that don't mean anything. They don't go anywhere, but it's how I sort of keep going. Are you going to go on Dancing with the Stars? No, I won't. Because no? at the end of the day, um, I feel like that is really time consuming and I like my life and I like the fact that I am able to pick up my kids from school right. and take them to their activities right. and still home to do homework. Yeah. Like, I like that. Because there's a lot of people who can dance well like you can. Yeah, I yeah. think I would be, I think I could be good on it because uh -huh. I can follow somebody who right. leads me, uh -huh. but I don't think that I would have the time. Yeah, it, that doesn't seem like it. Mm -mm. Now, this is live from Monica. What's in your diet? What do you eat every day? Do you believe in small meals? Um, I don't believe in small meals, and I do believe that I eat the complete backwards way that you're supposed to eat. They say that breakfast is the most important meal, and I almost universally never skip. I never have breakfast. It's usually like a breakfast-lunch combination. Uh -huh. I can't eat before the show. So you go, oh, really? Yeah, I oh cannot my. eat before the show. It really slows me down. It really makes me have indigestion. I get the hiccups while wow. I'm in the air. So I just wait until after the show. And I have things that I like. Um, I like Greek yogurt and I like fresh berries. I love, I, I don't stay away from carbs. I love carbohydrates because um, I exercise a lot. Um, I like a nice salad, lots of vegetables, lots of fresh vegetables. And how much do you exercise? I work out every day. You do? Seven for, days a week. For how long? Um, it depends. Some days, 45 It depends on what I'm doing. Some days, 45 minutes. Some days, I'll do two hours if I have the time. And that's running outside? Like um, sometimes I run outside. Right. I take exercise programs. I do Soul Cycle. I spin. I don't know if Great. you've ever done yeah, that. It's yeah. really fun. Um, I run outside in the park, which yeah. I love. So you so you have a really good regimen of exercise and diet. I do something every day. That's and I, great. And I, and I don't, I don't overeat. Well, that's that's great. So you're 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 not a, a sweetaholic. No, I'm lucky. You're I'm lucky, lucky, but I'm a saltaholic, and that really blows me up like a. Oh, wood that's dick. bad for oh your my heart gosh, too. It is bad for your heart. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is a good question. You should be able to answer this one. This is from CLR. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the secrets to the art of conversation? Mm, I think um, it's funny. I'm not. I'm not as good at this as I should be. The secret is good listening. To uh -huh. listen, that's the art of a good conversation, to listen and to remember what somebody has told you. Right. Because people want to be listened to, they want to be heard. <laughs> yes. You know, and so if you can listen, you can pick up something that somebody said and expound upon right. it. You know, it's that. also sort of a, the, the point of being a good parent, isn't it? Listening? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Are you good at that with your kids? It depends on what they're talking about. <laughs> it really, it really depends. There are, there are days where my daughter wants to tell me about 
uh, Justin Bieber oh, and what, yeah. what's happening, and, yeah. I, and I get lost no, no, halfway no. through the <laughs> I'm sure not. Uh, what about, um, oh, this is from Stephanie, live. What advice do you have for young, aspiring journalists? Oh, my gosh. Maybe that's for you. <laughs> no, not me. Maybe for um, my niece. Um, young, aspiring. I think it's all about um, pushing forward and working through no. Because people mm. will tell you no every chance they get. That's you will right. hear a lot of no. And you have to be diligent. And no doesn't always mean no. No sometimes means ask me again in three minutes. And <laughs> so that's what I'm good at. I'm good at wearing people down, yeah. I think. I, I think in this business, any success in this business are the people that can just hang in there right. long enough. Absolutely. You know? This is from Ruth, and she wants to know, what is one little thing about Regis that can sometimes get on your nerves? You don't have to answer that if you don't want. Re no, <laughs> Regis is very funny, and I say this all the time, that Regis is like my fourth child, my youngest child, and my child that needs constant redirection. <laughs> so I'm constantly ignoring whatever it is that he's just said to me, and then I redirect him some in some other way. That's because great. He likes to sort of sabotage my stories or whatever it is I'm talking about, or if we're doing an arts and crafts right. segment, he will do his best to sabotage it because it's all for comedic right. purposes, of course. But if there's something we really have to get out there, I'm very good at ignoring and redirecting him. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. why you're a good mother, oh, too. Oh, look, a bird. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, would you have enjoyed, this is from Susie, would you have enjoyed being a stay-at-home mom or at least had a longer maternity leave? Yeah, I, I wish that we have longer maternity leaves um, here. Um, in Canada, I think it's a year. What did you maternity. have? I think I had six weeks, six weeks. I don't have a typical job, though. I got to bring my children to work with me, oh, which was great. nice, yeah. um, and I'm lucky for that. But um, I do think that there's nothing as good as having your mom there, you know, for you at all times. Having said that, it's the hardest job. And when we go on, you know, a long vacation with our kids, at the, the last three days of the vacation, I can't wait to get back where there are people there to make me look pretty and give me a cup of coffee if I need it. <laughs> you know, have I, somebody wait yeah, on have you. Have somebody wait on me. <laughs> right. for a day. I got yeah. it. I got it. <laughs> Uh, this is interesting. I, well, you've kind of answered this, but maybe this is mm -hmm. more about an average person because anybody who works out every day is not average. So this is live from Stephen. He says, hi, Kelly. Mm -hmm. How much do you think the average person should exercise every day to stay fit and healthy? What's, what's realistic? And I mean, I think for me, when I started exercising, and I didn't start exercising until my kids all three were in school. So mm -hmm. I'm, a fairly, I'm fairly new at this. I started with just walking a little bit every day. Mm -hmm. And I just think that you have to begin at the beginning with anything you do. And if you just walk a little bit, or um, um, instead of riding, if, you're, if you work in a building with an elevator, instead of riding the elevator, take the stairs. Or just moving your body the smallest That's bit right. can really bring on sort of, I don't want to say a euphoric feeling, but a feeling that you've done something good for yourself. Exactly. Um, this is interesting. This is something people ask me, too. This is from Julia. Do you ever find it more than a little difficult to stay upbeat day in and day out? Oh, my gosh, yeah. I mean, I have great bouts of, like, not not happy. I mean, what you see of me on camera is one hour. And I always say, like, if you can't get up for the audience for one hour, <laughs> then you really need to get out of business. <laughs> um, but, I mean, there are times where I'm... You know, I have a bad day or I'm sad or whatever, emotional, and, you know, and I go to my dressing room and I cry. Is that know? how you get out of a bad day? You cry it out? Yeah, I cry yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. let yeah. it out. Let yeah. it out for heaven's sake. I do, too. Out. you got to let it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always say I don't have a bad day. I can have a few miserable hours, mm -hmm. but I don't have a real bad day. It's not a I, bad day. I get through it. Yeah, you I just have to it. get through it yeah. and, and let it out. If yeah. you try to, like, repress it, repress it, repress it, it's going to come out. It's going to turn into a bad week. Yeah, that's right. You know? Uh, this is live from uh, Nikki. Are you and Mark headed down Reality Road? Reality Road. You mean with for I guess us? a reality yeah. show. Are you, um, are no, you, no, no. We love our marriage. I, I feel <laughs> like people. I feel like that's almost certain doom for married couples. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, to me, what we have is precious, and it's too realistic, and it's really boring. Um, nothing exciting happens to us ever. 
Um, and so... Good for you. Yeah, so, I mean, to bring cameras into the house, people would... It would be like watching paint dry. <laughs> like, it, would, it would be a camera trained on us watching television. <laughs> well, you do love reality shows, though. You're, I do, yeah. yeah I love them. I love yes. watching all of them. I'm always amazed at how people will put themselves out there oh, and let cameras into their home. I can't imagine it. I, I can't imagine it either. I, I mean, this is as close as I'm willing to get. <laughs> this is live from a guest. Mm -hmm. Has your husband taught your children to speak Spanish? Um, no, he hasn't. Spanish is not my husband's first language. He was raised in Italy, so Italian is his first language. And Did we he... do give our children Italian lessons. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, that's great. But um, I have to say that they are, in their classes, they do very well in Spanish, and I think it's because of the base of Italian. Italian, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And this is live from Vicky. How do you zone out negativity and stay focused on your goals and your dreams? Vicky, I have to tell you that uh, as much as I would love to tell you that I zone out on negativity, sometimes I really indulge in the negative. I mean, mm. I think it's I think it's human nature to sometimes go into the negative. Um, I try to snap myself out of it, and I really, you know, anytime something bad happens or something that I perceive to be bad or wrong, I just think about the you know, 30 good things that I have in my life, mm -hmm. you know, and the things that really matter are usually the things that never leave you, you know, so. Um, I sometimes do a grateful check. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I saw when I'm really like feeling like things are terrible, I'll say to myself, okay, no, just what do we have to be grateful for? Okay, mm -hmm. my health, mm -hmm. Phil's health, mm -hmm. we have a roof over our head, we have a good life, we love each other, yeah. we have a good family. You have to take those moments to do that. Yeah, so otherwise, do my grateful check. otherwise it's, it's easy yeah. to say, I can't believe that man just stole my cab. I know, I know, you know, I know. And, and you just stew, you're so <laughs> mad at the man that stole the cab. This is live from Beth. She wants to know what you do to get rid of stress at the end of the day. Um, mm. I, my kids and I have a ritual where we do, um, it's called good night yoga, and, and <laughs> it's like like just like a series of little affirmations and deep breathing oh, exercises, great. and it was sent to me by a viewer, um, and then I also have like lavender mist that I'll spray around <laughs> whenever, you know, things are getting on my nerves. Oh, I love I good sort of, night yoga. Yeah, that's great. Really nice. Oh, yeah. that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, this is live from Sky. How much does your husband help you around the house? Um... Well, he's very good with fixing things that are broken. Like if the toilet is broken, he's very good at that. Um, hanging things or fixing like mechanical things that go wrong. He's very Great. manly in that sense. Great. Um, but with the dishes and stuff, that he doesn't. He's not very helpful with that. Like that kind of <laughs> laundry and he doesn't go there. He doesn't go there. Mm -mm. Uh, what are your must-have beauty products? Oh my gosh, um, at this point, it's like, at this point, um, it's too see. many things. There's to a mention. lot, like a moisturizer, and when that doesn't work, olive oil. And, oh, really? Um, oh, yeah. Like, oh. I, I now put, like, I put all sorts of argan oil is very good right now. Oh, I don't know good. if you've tried On your that. face? On my face, on my body, on my oh. hair. Argon. Argon. Ah. Argon oil, yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and the rest of it is really um, a lot of makeup. <laughs> and um, sunscreen, because now my face gets so spotted. As soon yeah. as I walk into the sun, yeah. I get spots all over my face. Like, a, like um, what's the firehouse dog? The Dalmatian. Oh, yes. I look like a Dalmatian one day in the sun. Um, <laughs> oh, you're so nice on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> How have you learned to deal with the paparazzi taking pictures of you and your family? Um, you know... They're just doing a job, and I find, like, you know, if you wave and smile and give them a nice shot, yeah, they, they, they move on. Exactly, I they mean, do. I mean, we're not that interesting, so we don't have that much to offer them. But my dad used to always say, you know, if you don't want to get your picture taken, then don't go out. Don't because go out, you, right. You know, then you shouldn't be going to a place where there's cameras. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, um, I, I just feel like that's, that's such a small thing. Yes, it it's is. It's not a big deal. And right. they've been very nice to us always, and, like, they're nice to my kids. My kids high-five them. <laughs> Well, that's great. Yeah, that's yeah, great. So. Yeah. How do you keep your kids grounded? Uh, this is from Tracy. She wants to know, given that the celebrity aspect is a part of your life, how do they stay down to earth? I don't really think that they are entirely that aware of, I mean, they know that we're in entertainment. My, my youngest son thinks that I work for the Taxi Cab Commission because <laughs> he sees me on Taxi TV. <laughs> so he's not, a, um, and, and up until very recently, both of my younger kids thought that I was Regis's receptionist. <laughs> so they thought that I worked for him in That's some so funny. office capa capacity. Um, but they really don't, 
you know, it's when it's when it's your business and it's what you do. Yeah. You just assume everybody does the same thing, right, so they right. don't really think there's anything right. big about it or unusual about it. And we keep them out of it as much as possible. Yeah, that, we don't I, let them go to every big right. thing, you know, and, and do layouts. No, yeah, yeah, uh -uh. exactly. Oh, this is great. Live from Chris. Do you have a personal motto or mantra or something like that? Um, yeah, it, actually, um, my husband taught it to me. It's it's get over yourself. You're really not that important. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, that's sort of like you know. I really do sort of go. Oh gosh, just get over it. It's not that big a deal. Move I, on. I, move I, on. My mother used to say that to me. Nobody yeah. really cares. I say, really Oh, mother, don't say anything. Don't tell anybody that. Just nobody cares. Well, Mark once <laughs> said to me, he's like, he goes, what other people think of you is really none of your business. So you <laughs> oh, need to like, great. you need to like stop worrying. That's about. great. Because you know, it's so easy to go onto these little blogs yes. and never read the comments at the bottom <laughs> of the blog. It will only break your heart. <laughs> I, know. I, I put this little uh, you know, gel on my cheeks sometime mm -hmm. to sort of shine and we got a, uh, an email saying, your, your cheek implants look awful. Your cheek. Oh, maybe because, they're talking to no, me. No, no, no. Because I put gloss and made them shine. I, I don't wear that anymore now. Yeah, people think yeah. that they keep telling me that my fake teeth look awful, and I'm like, these are real. And unfortunately, I would not put fake teeth this large into my mouth. I have a hard time speaking as it is. No, they look great. And this is from Lauren. She said, "Everybody has a staple Starbucks drink. What's mm. yours?" Yes, I uh, get um, a triple shot grande skim latte. Oh God. And I usually have two of them, one before work, one after work. Uh, this is live. That's a lot of caffeine. Yeah, well, listen, what do you do? <laughs> live from Pat. What did you want to do when you were little? Did you ever think you'd end up where you are? Um, I, I always had big dreams. And it's funny, um, I always dreamed of coming to New York. My grandfather, um, Paul Riley, took me to New York City to see the Radio City Music Spectacular, the Christmas Spectacular. But back in the 70s, it, they showed a movie, and the Rockettes came out and did a kick line, and then they showed a movie, and they showed Pete's Dragon. Remember that movie? Yeah, Pete's Dragon? Yeah. yeah. And he took us to dinner at the Magic Pan, and we, he took us to Radio City, uh, um, uh, to Rockefeller Center to see the... Um, the the ice skaters. Ice skating. And I thought, I was an enamored of the city, and I thought, this is where I'm going to live. I'm going to live in New York City. And um, and I'll do whatever it takes to get there, you know. And and I thought, maybe maybe I'll go into the entertainment industry. I like being in the school plays. I didn't have a great singing voice, but I could act pretty okay. I liked, I, I, uh, I felt like intoxicated when I heard people's laughter. Oh, and so, that's great. you know, so I'm living sort of kind of what I thought my my, my that, life might turn out like. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So have your dream. Yeah, you I see? always say like dream big because that's right. what's the worst that could happen? That's great. How do you keep your relationship going? How This is from Miss T. What is the key to sustaining your relationship? Um, we, well, need, we always need tips in this area. I adore my husband. I really do. He's been um, the man of my dreams since I met him. I mean, oh. you know Mark. He's, like, yeah. he's, uh, he's a dream come true. He's a real gentleman. Um, he's a real protector. He's a provider. And he's a great father and a friend to me. He's my friend. Um, so I just sort of tell him that every day. Or I, at least I try to tell him that every day. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> Sometimes I need to be reminded. So you think being a friend is the best thing yeah, about sustaining think, your relationship? Yeah, I think just um, having a mutual respect. You know, you can't mm -hmm. just you can't just demand respect or command respect. Mm -hmm. You have to respect each other. It has to be mutual. Mm -hmm. You have to like being around each other. I love being around him. Everything he says makes me laugh. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, yeah so I'm lucky. You're very lucky. Uh, this is from Elizabeth. I love the clothes you wear on this show. How would you describe your signature style? Oh, um, my signature style is whatever's on sale and whatever fits. <laughs> no, we, um, I, I'm very lucky. I have a great stylist named Faith Chromis, and she's been very good to me. It's sort of, because I don't think I have a natural sense of style, but I know what I like when it's on me. Mm -hmm. And I, I just sort of like classic silhouettes. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key to everything is a classic, well-tailored silhouette. And if you do that, you won't go wrong. Do you have a guilty pleasure? Storm. I love the name Storm. Hi, Storm. Mm, hi, Storm. <laughs> do you have a guilty pleasure? Um, a guilty pleasure. 
I guess reality TV would be my guilty pleasure. Oh, really? Although I don't feel that guilty about <laughs> it. Like I love The Real Housewives, and I don't feel bad about it at all. I love it. Like I wanna, I wanna live their life for like a day. You know, a lot of people ask the question that if you're uh, sad about the soap operas going on. Yeah, I'm really sad. Yeah. I really am. I'm devastated. All my children is where I met Mark. Oh, really? It's where, um, it's where we had our, our we had our first two kids while we were on that show. Oh, really? Yeah. So um, it's a special place. It's not just a job to us. That show was our life. I mean, we would wow. not know each other. Oh, wow. You know, so it means something yes, to us. Yeah. You know, very sad. Oh. And I mean. How are we not going to watch Erica get married again and again? <laughs> How are we not I going know. to? It's what are we going to do without depressing. all those traumas? I don't know. Uh, this is live from Kathy. She wants to know if someone cares for your children during the day. Well, my kids are all in school. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it... Do you have Usually, a nanny? I, I have a babysitter that uh -huh. comes and like if my, if like one child has soccer and uh -huh. I've got to be at a dentist appointment, she'll right. come and like pick up whoever... I can't get to, mm -hmm. um, and she's been amazing. And this is how this is how we found her. Are you ready? Yeah. She was a special ed teacher who worked for the prison system, <laughs> and I was like, "Can you start tomorrow?" <laughs> she was like, "Perfect for us." <laughs> I was like, "Then you are a dream for me." That's so yeah, funny. Yeah. So I have somebody that helps me every each and every day because I wouldn't be able to. I mean, oh. I don't. I always say to my mom, "I'm like, how did you? How did you do it? How did you?" How did you manage to get us to where we needed to be always at the same time? And she said, well, you were two, two girls that were a year apart, so it was easy. I right. put you all in the same, you know, right. we all this, when I thought about it, I was like, oh, that's true. We did have ballet together and <laughs> piano together. And, right, but it's right. hard with like three kids, right. different ages, different genders, you know. Are you tired all the time? I'm not tired all the time, but um, when I... When I get tired, I get really tired. Like when it's time for vacation, I need my vacation. Yeah. I need it. And do you get a day off on the weekend, or are you running all weekend no, with no, your children? No, no, no. On the weekend, we are like we're very relaxed. Yeah. We are a relaxed family on the yeah. weekend. We try not to overschedule. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Soccer practice and all that stuff. Um, Joaquin, Mark will take Joaquin to soccer practice, and you know, and my my daughter um, likes to ride equestrian, but it's like a, a, a very relaxed schedule. Yeah. Nothing That's like great. nothing stressful. Great. Um, you have the best style. Have you ever thought of doing a fashion clothing line? Um, you know, I've thought about it briefly, but it seems like it's, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm up to the task. I don't know if I'm up to the work. You mm -hmm. know, I try to do things that I know I can do. Right. You know? You've already got a lot on your plate, it seems lot, to yeah. me. And let's see here. What virtues have you learned to have, what does it say? What virtue have you learned to have more of raising kids? Okay. And what priorities changed for you as you became a mother? Um, I've learned to have more patience, mm -hmm. definitely, than I ever thought I would have. Mm -hmm. And my priorities, I mean, changed radically. I used to be um, just so self-involved. I mean, it was all everything was about me. Or, right. You know, just the biggest thing I had to do was, like, how will I wear my hair today? <laughs> and now I'm like, I washed my hair this week. You know, <laughs> it's like these personal goals right. because it's so much about your kids and right. and making sure uh, their homework is done and making sure their class project is done and making sure that their suit is pressed for their friend's bar mitzvah. You know, right. it's not about you. <laughs> uh, from Michael, being from Jersey, does the show Jersey Shore annoy you? No, being from Jersey, the show Jersey Shore, like, fascinates me. I'm like, where were all of these people? Like, what, I mean, what did I miss? I must have missed this whole area of my life where I was just wandering around, staggering around, drinking all the time. I didn't have that. We never had that. That's funny. But I, but I, believe me, I, I wish I could do it all over again. I, because it's amazing that they really turned themselves into businesses. Right. Little so you don't see anything that you recognize as a Jersey thing that you knew? No, I mean, we had, we had, you know, there's an element of certain things I hear um, people saying that sound familiar to me, being from South Jersey. Right. Um, but I didn't recognize the behavior. Okay. It's a little bit different. <laughs> a little bit different. This is from LaBella. She wants to know who have been your women hero role models throughout your life? Oh my gosh. Well, definitely my mother. My mother. My mother-in-law is another one. Oh, great. Um, my sister. Um, and I guess my, my grandmother. She died when I was very young. But I, I just looked up to her so much because she was a woman that was working 
um, and really and, and building it. She was an entrepreneur and she built several businesses when women didn't work, really. Mm -hmm. My mother was a, a, a stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. and, and I watched her mother go to work every day, and, wow. and she was really remarkable to me. Oh, I thought great. she was mysterious. Yes, almost. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure. Well, we're just about out of time. I, there are a couple of questions. There are so many questions left to do, but I, I think what people want from you are some tips, mm -hmm. yeah. because it really seems that you you're, you're working really hard mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. your family's working mm -hmm. your marriage is working yeah so is there a tip you'd like to say to women that are just about to start their families something that they should be thinking about as they approach this I think that um, you know it's very hard people say oh you can have it all you can have it all and I'm, I'm one of them I'm, I'm somebody that will say you can have it all but you have to realize that by having it all it's not going to be a full plate of everything. <laughs> You're going to have to prioritize carefully. We've never made our careers ab about our careers. We've made our careers about ways to support our family. And mm -hmm. so that's sort of how we um, deal with that aspect of our lives. So it's like, what supports our family the best? I mean, would it have been exciting for M Mark or me to go off to Africa and shoot a film? Sure, of course, but that does not support our family mm -hmm. the best. Stability supports our family the best. Consistency supports our family the best. Right. And that's sort of how we we go through working and family. And and I think at the end of the day, don't be so hard on yourself. And it's a work in progress. There's going to be a lot of changes throughout your life, whether you're professionally building up to a certain point in your career, pursuing a dream, pursuing a husband, raising a family. These are all things that evolve over time. Mm -hmm. And to put... To expect a big bang in the first month of marriage, that's not realistic. To expect a big bang in your career overnight, that's not realistic. Right, You know, right. it's work. It's all work. Did you and Mark live together before you were married? Briefly. Uh -huh. I mean, we had two. Well, what's funny is we didn't really live together even after we were married. We kept two apartments, and <laughs> he right. liked his apartment better, and I liked my apartment. <laughs> so we would go between our two oh, apartments. Oh, really? Yeah. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Well, we're out of time. It was great. It was Thank so you. great. Thank you're, you. You're this terrific. Is great. I and I know we couldn't answer all the questions, and I'm sorry about that. But we'll see you next week when we have the great Jane Fonda, oh who's going to talk about fitness and aging and being a mom and being a grandma and really trying to help other women, which is what she spends a lot of time doing. So tune in next week and listen to Jane Fonda.